Thank you for joining the Reverend Dr. Sean Michael Greer, radio host, national pastor, author, and speaker for Sundays with Dr. Sean. Hold on tight. Here comes the truth. I know what you're saying. It's not Sunday. I know. I don't have one because like if I did have one for each one, that would be whew, that'd be a lot of money. One for each day. So it'd be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of money. Have big star like that do your announcement. It's huge. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I'm. I, uh, it's neat because I've heard a lot from our old Kehala that we uh, used to do at the Stabley's home in uh, Newark, Delaware. It was awesome. We had great food. I used to always go on and on about the food, but I'm not kidding you. It was amazing. And Jerry Mitchell, you can testify because Jerry co-taught for me and, and uh, guest taught for me a couple times. And uh, he and Myra brought food and were benefactors, beneficiaries of great food. Super, super good. Um, love those people. I say it all the time. That's what real fellowship is all about. And we loved doing that. And uh, also, so I want to tell you really quick. Um, I forgot to say you can, we pay to keep our blog talk radio portal open every month. We don't broadcast there anymore. We could, but we don't. Um, I just don't like that platform to broadcast on. They just so many mistakes and it's the biggest one in the world, but it's not the best. And, uh, but certainly that's where I built the majority of my audience and I am beholden to them for that. That said, uh, you have to pay a certain amount every month to keep the archive. And I want to say I have either 200 or 500 hours, something like that, there of messages and speeches and all kinds of things. So feel free to go there anytime if you search The Ninja Pastor, The Ninja Pastor, blogtalkradio.com, uh, The Collision of Faith and Politics, you'll find it. Hey, Linda and or Susan, uh, welcome, welcome. I was just talking about the Kehala. And how wonderful it is, how much I miss everybody. Um, sorry I missed last night. I um, I just got tired. That's the way this weird thing is, man. You just get tired. It's crazy. Crazy how it happens. But today is a little bit of a, I don't want to say a gloomy day. I want to characterize it as gloomy because you know what? Today is as good a day as any. Today's a great day to be alive. And just because the sun's not shining doesn't mean that's not a good day. It's a good day for lots of things. You know, today in a, in a, uh, in light like this for a photographer photographing outdoor flowers, this is perfect. Perfect. Shane Clemenson, it's funny I said that about uh, photographers, and Shane Clemenson's a phenomenal photographer, professional photographer outside of Chicago, or in, in Chicago maybe. Hey, Miss Reva, how are you? So uh, Shane's top notch. Uh, Shane did my publicity photo shortly after my crash. For the book, for the first book, Excellence Kill the Church, How Mediocrity is Destroying America. So he came all the way over to my house and we walked outside and he took the picture. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's really, really good. So, but uh, we sure appreciate you joining. Let's see here. It looks like we're good on sound. So hopefully, hopefully we're all good on sound. I don't know. Looks like we are. I don't know. I hope we are. Anyhow, uh, hey, Greg and or Amanda, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, Susan, and Shane is top notch. And if you want to hear somebody preach, whoo, Shane could get done. Shane has the distinction of being our family's favorite youth pastor, too. Uh, he was phenomenal to my son. And, uh, and after the crash, he was unreal. He was really unreal. He, he ministered to him and will always be indebted to you, Shane. Awesome. Hey, Miss Dawn from uh, Ohio. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to have you. This is regular everyday weather in Ohio, except for the 10 minutes that it's sunshine. In between July and July. But uh, hey, Karen, how are you? Thanks for joining me. So it's interesting to me, the struggles that a lot of people have with... Um, I, and I don't think it's, I don't, I'm not demeaning them, but with knowing the right thing to do, what do I do? Uh, the conundrum of wisdom versus knowledge. Hey, Miss Bonnie, that's my art partner right there uh, from Tucson, Arizona. We're praying for PJ. PJ surgery was supposed to be today. 
uh, but they moved it to tomorrow. So it's a huge deal. And then uh, they had a huge loss in their family, um, not in their family family, but in their business family, which is like family. If you know the Quins, your family. If you're in business with them, your family. And, uh, and so they had a huge shocking loss. Um, I think she told me it was yesterday and, uh, just terrible. And, and our thoughts and prayers go out to the family and to all of you. Hey, Mr. Wing. Um, so there's, there's a lot of times a struggle with what, what do I do? What's the wisest thing to do? There's always the, what I want to do right? That's the easy part of the equation. It's super easy for us to figure out what we want to do, right? Super easy. That's that's the easiest part. What do I want to do? Now, I say that, and a little bit tongue-in-cheek, um, that's not always the easiest thing because sometimes you have a lot of options, and they're all good options. And I think of my daughter, uh, Dr. Lily Greener, uh, Lillian Elizabeth Greener, she had a lot of options. She was super talented in a bazillion different things. And she's just phenomenal. Really, really, really phenomenal. She's so smart and so capable and, and all of that. And, and so she, she had a bazillion options, you know, as to what she would do. And, you know, most people don't have that. Um, it's called an embarrassment of riches in a, in um, the literary world, an embarrassment of riches. And so you, like for me, I say that a lot about where I live. We have an embarrassment of riches of grocery options, right? We have every kind of store you can think of. I won't name them all because they don't pay me for advertising, but I, I love them. There's really not one that I go to that I don't really think is wonderful. And I'm just awed by it, just awed by it. And so even something like that, well, which grocery store do I go to? Which, which, uh, which store for this or that do I use, right? And sometimes we think that that's not a big deal. Like that's, well, that doesn't require wisdom. Well, sometimes it does, you know, what makes sense for you and your family? What makes sense for you and your family doesn't necessarily make sense for uh, other people. It doesn't mean... It doesn't mean that, you know, whatever you choose is wrong. It just might not be right for somebody else. So there's a lot that goes into decisions as to what's right or wrong. Um, as to have a surgery or not to have a surgery. Uh, people are all over me sometimes because there's a surgery um, that would help one of the aspects of my situation that I won't have. I won't have it unless it's an absolute emergency. And I've sought wise counsel. I've sought the counsel of people I dearly love and trust that have had the surgery under emergency conditions. And I know for sure I don't want that. And so there was a lot that went into that decision, it, not the least of which is that the surgery has a 38% success rate. And if it's a failure, it's bad. You, you go a bad direction. And so I don't, you know, I don't begrudge people for, for having made a decision one way or the other when it comes to that. They can do that. Um, I think of decisions as to treatment for, hey, buddy, that's my little, that's my little show buddy right here, Buckeye. She's not feeling too good today. Um, I think of uh, the decision as it relates to cancer or other, you know, they call them dread diseases, whether or not to have surgery, whether or not to pursue uh, conventional treatment. I know a lot of people who, I know one right now, his dear friend, Jim, and, and his wife, they, yeah, free will, Bonnie, you're absolutely right. Um, they made a decision to do completely alternative care, and, uh, you know, it was intense, and, and now, apparently, she is cancer-free. So, hey, Sue, how are you? Thank you so much for joining. Um, I really, I'll have to tell you, I, if I get cancer now, God forbid, I need one more thing. Um, I will not pursue treatment. It makes no sense for me to do treatment. Why would I do that? My father had cancer and um, there was a mix up of some sort. He was actually stage four diagnosis. They were told stage two. He pursued treatment. All it did was make him very ill, very fast. 
uh, and he had a goal in mind. He wanted to live to a certain point, and that's why he did it. Uh, but it really, really impacted the quality of the end of his life. And so I look at that, and I say, how do you make decisions like that? The world has a million decisions just come right, right at you all the time. And knowing what to do is tough. This house, we were choosing between this house and another house. Same development. Um, hey, Mr. Neal. And uh, talk about decision makers. That, that lady's a decision maker. So you, uh, you know, you might think, well, that's silly. I mean, deciding what house to buy. Come on, that's easy. Well, not necessarily. You know, this house, for whatever reason, people, well, we think we know the reason why people weren't buying it. For a year, it sat next to, directly next to the sales office. And I don't think people want to sit next to the sales office. You know what I mean? I, I don't know about you, but I don't know that that's something I would want. Uh, I don't think I would want cars in and out all day long. I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't care. Um, it's The view is extraordinary. I mean, I, I just, this is a dream view for me. And I smell sea air. I I. I get to see wildlife all the time. It's just literally right there. I say, my saying is beauty, find the beauty in your own backyard, but this is my front yard and I love it. But the other house had a beautiful backyard. Oh, gorgeous backyard. The house had a few features on it that, that aren't on this house. The bathroom, the master bath was really fancy and really nice. Hey, Mr. Page. Um, and then, uh, the front yard was very small, but the backyard was large and it was flat and it backed up to some houses that had been there a long time. And there was like a hedgerow in between. That was quiet, you know, quiet. But there were there were decisions to be made um, that went to more than just preference. Not to say that the person that buys that home isn't going to love it and it wouldn't be perfect for them. It probably would be perfect for them. But I really, there was something about this house. I know that something mostly was this front yard. The fact that we're on a main road. Uh, I like that. Um, we have just some of the most stunning homes across the street from us that are way out of our price range. The lot across the street was listed for um, over a million dollars. And now it's way down for the, I'm almost going to buy it after the, I might end the show early. Because they've lowered the price to, to like uh, 680000 So I just might end this show early, run over there, call whoever, and just write them out a check. Now, the check would be completely no good. But the point is, it's a million-dollar view. comes with an island. So, uh, so maybe if nobody buys that, we'll always have this view. Who knows? Um, but I, but I want to say, there's a lot that goes into decisions you made. So, but then, wisdom versus education education versus wisdom i know you've heard this saying a bazillion times um you know he's so he's so overeducated she's so overeducated she's got no common sense and there's a lot there are a lot of people who believe that you can't be wise um and be well educated or like that's the conundrum you know a lot of education you, you people equate that with well they got no common sense or somebody doesn't have a lot of com a lot of wisdom a lot of education they're wise doesn't have to be that way uh i i find that uh well i was having this discussion with a dear dear friend this week about you know the college degree if you're just generally looking for a college degree you say look this is my goal it's what i want to have it doesn't matter what the degree is in really because that degree is really not going to help you get a job other than to show that you can stick it out that you don't quit things. Um, and that's a lot of it. Now, don't get me started. A lot of degrees nowadays, they're worthless. They're, they're silly. I mean, you know, the, what they are, the bunch of social engineering, social justice and all that. And that's just silly. All that said to say this. Wisdom, I think, comes from a lot of places. Now, you know, my book, uh, Be Bible Summary for Real People, please Go to Amazon, purchase it. It's only seven ninety nine, um, and and write a review. Thank you to all you who have written reviews. I know thousands of books have sold, um, and there's four or six reviews. Please go there. I cannot tell you how important it is. It's so important. You, you say, well, I'm not a review person. Well, in this case, I'd like you to be a review person. So where's your wisdom 
You know, this is the best source. The Holy Bible, right? The Holy Bible. This is, happens to be one of several Bibles, several, several Bibles that I have, although I don't feel I have enough. Um, this is the ESV Study Bible, English Standard Version, put out by Crossway, and it is fantastic. I mean, it's just a beautiful Bible. I just released a photograph that I did, and it was this Bible, and this the sun was coming in, the light was coming in, the blinds were on it, and it just struck me. I thought, ooh, enlighten the Word. The Word is light. Um, enlighten my mind, the Word. You know, it just really stuck with me, so I took a photograph of it, and it turned out good. One one quick click. Um, so go look at that. It's still living photography.com or on Facebook or everywhere else. Um, so let me get started on this. I wanted to say all that because I want you to understand there's certain things you can read and certain things you can watch. You know, I have a buddy of mine who all he needs to do, he's not really a class taker, doesn't take classes or anything like that, but he can watch a YouTube video on how to do the most complex thing. And he's mastered it, literally. Not like he thinks he can do it. I mean, he's mastered it. He's absolutely amazing. His work is impeccable. Just, And I don't know if he knows people like that, but they don't need to take classes. Just show them one time, they'll master it. And in the process of watching you, they'll think of a way to do it better. Maybe not faster, but better. Um, better results, all of that. There are certain places that you can look that are... Pretty amazing uh, for, for, like, you know, I, t I talk about my, my book will help you. I mean, the Bible summary for, for real people, it, it'll help you. It will absolutely help you. As an adjunct to reading the Bible, it will absolutely help you. And, and I'm saying, as far as what I write in my book, doesn't, that's not an exhaustive summary or an exhaustive, um, I've written those. Um, I've written 15,000 words on one book of the Bible. Uh, so, you know, not in this book, uh, but it's also not a concordance. It's not a, you know, uh, it, it's not a commentary. It's none of those things. So I don't want you to think that, you know, you buy this book. That's what that is, because that's not what it is. <coughs> what I do is say, that's just, that's just <coughs> mom. Go ahead. See, she's fierce. It's just, mommy. just mommy. You're good. You're good. I'm safe. Nobody's going to kill me. See how she protects me. She was up in a second. Anyway, um, but uh, anyway, so I think, I, I think there are some foundational things that we can know, right? And scripture, knowing the foundation, going directly to the foundation Really, Scripture doesn't need. I mean, honestly, if I never wrote this book, you wouldn't. No biggie. The world's the world's not going to collapse. the The faith world's not going to collapse if I don't write this book. But I will say this: the Bible is a complex uh, gathering of sixty six separate books into one cohesive library, and uh, it's contiguous and it's amazing. and And uh, I just am blown away by it. But what I want you to understand is this, is you could have just the Bible. And if you were, hey, Miss Donna, if you were the type of person where you could just dig in, hardcore dig into Scripture, and you really, really read it and read it and read it, it's probably better to be a study Bible of some sort than, you know, than not. You would be fine with that, Really? If you truly you said, God, give me, give me the discernment, give me open, open this, take the scales off my eyes, enlighten me, let that light shine through on me, you would be okay. You'd figure it out. God would see to it that you did. Books like what I wrote make it easier, but not just for new people of the Bible, but maybe a different way. This is the 34th time. This is I wrote this book. This is as a result of the 34th time I read all the way through the Bible. And um, and this is what it meant to me. I'm in a different place now than I was the first, second, eighth, twentieth time, even thirty-third time. You know, I'm in a different place. I, the what I glean from things is very, very different. So, what I want you to understand is this: is that it's good to have some resources. You say, "Well, you have thirty-some Bibles." I don't. Maybe if I only have that many, I'd be sad if I do. 
I love Bibles. So, and I have lots of commentaries and I have lots of, um, you know, study helps and, and books written about the most, you know, intense theological things and systematic theology by, you know, five different authors and uh, word study books that just talk about the Hebrew, each, each Hebrew word. And, and then I have word study book that talks about each, each Greek word. And so C.S. Lewis, you're right, Karen, C.S. Lewis, one of the greatest writers, let me tell you, ah, man, one of the greatest thinkers, one of the greatest apologists of all time. Um, if you haven't read Mere Christianity, uh, or the screw tape letters, ooh, 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 wow, you're in for something. And the, the Mere Christianity is actually just a, um, transcribed what he was saying in radio broadcasts. You got to read it at some point in your life. It's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, I have it right over there. It's, it's mind blowing, beautiful, beautiful book. I refer to it all the time. So thank you for mentioning C.S. Lewis. One of the great resources of our lifetime. And he lived during our lifetime. He lives during our lifetime. Phenomenal. Proverbs. You know, I don't know if you noted the title. Uh, the proverbial conundrum of education versus wisdom, but Proverbs, it comes from Proverbs, and Proverbs, written by Solomon, Agur, and Lemuel, uh, the date of writing was 971 to 931 BC, the number of chapters, 31, to whom was it written? The young Israelites near the wisest mortal man to ever live, Solomon. That's pretty strong. The purpose of the writing was to bring about wisdom paths to the youth and the mature that would listen to wisdom and the leader who might not know at all. I've been in circumstances where, and, and maybe this will resonate with you, I don't know, but I've been in circumstances where I was the expert, right? I was the expert. I was the guy, the man, and some people don't like that responsibility. I love it. I absolutely love it. I, I, I enjoy having that pressure on me because I, I rise to it. That pushes me forward. Some people shrink under that, and there's nothing wrong with that. Not everybody's meant for that. Um, not everybody's meant for college. Not everybody's meant for seminary. Not everybody's meant for... I used to say this. Uh, people would want to come on the police department, and, and they would... I'd ask them, why do you want to be a police officer? And they'd say, well, I've always wanted to be a police officer. And I would immediately be a no for me because if that's your reason, that's not a good enough reason because I always wanted to be. You know, I want, I want, I wanted to fly on the space shuttle. I wanted to do that. I wanted to fly on an SR-71 Blackbird. And now I did get my wish to fly second seat and a fighter jet. And that was awesome. And I loved it. And no, I didn't throw up. I was whooping and hollering and grunting. Because that's what you have to do. It's, wow, it's hard. Those guys, they're, they're world-class athletes. When you fly a, fly a fighter jet and you don't understand what they have to do just to stay conscious. You know what I'm saying? Just to stay conscious. It's oh, absolutely amazing. Anyway, I could talk about fighter jets all day long. You know, I'd be, I'd want to be a fighter pilot if I fit, you know, it was very difficult to modify the seat and do a bunch of stuff to it and everything just so I could fly in it. Now I wanted to drive an Indy car and I sat through the classes and all this and did all the stuff. And then when they put me in the Indy car, unfortunately the modern Indy car I would fit in, but the Indy cars back then, um, uh, I was too tall. And so my head stuck up too much. But, I mean, I wanted and I listened. Now, I eventually got to drive a NASCAR car. I went 156.4 miles per hour, I think. No, that's not the fastest I've ever been. I've had motorcycles. I've been over that speed. I don't recommend it. Don't endorse it. Don't. If you do it and you get hurt, don't blame me. I've been in other vehicles faster than that, too. But the point is, is those are all things I'd, I'd love to do. Some people would love to do lots of things, but there, there are obstacles between you and that thing, being able to do that thing. Uh, there's education, certification, all of these things. Like I have a quadcopter or a drone that I use for photography and videography. And, you know, it's it's relatively easy to fly, but there's a bazillion rules. People don't realize. They think, oh, yeah, I found this drone up in the sky and peeking on my daughter. It's No, 
first of all. That's no. And no, I'm not the police peeking on you and, you know, ratting you out and all that stuff. That's stupid. I would never do it. I use it for photography and I use it for videography. Anyway, the point is, so I had to take tests and then I had to get registered and get certified so that I could do it. If I could sell a photograph or a video or whatever, I can do that legally. You have to do that and do it legally. Anyway, there's some things you have to do. Well, if you want wisdom, I mean, genuinely, if you want wisdom, true wisdom, you have to do some things, right? You have to do some things. You, you can't talk about the book. You have to read the book. You can't talk about the seminar. You have to go to the seminar. You can't talk about the videos, instructional videos. You have to, you have to watch the videos. You have to pay attention to the videos. You have to pay attention to the book. You have to maybe reread the book. You have to take notes. You have to really dig in. You have to try. You say the Bible. I don't know. It doesn't resonate with me. Uh, it's never helped me. Well, I I say to people, and I mean this sincerely, you got to invest in it. And really that ends up being an investment in yourself because anytime you can know more and understand more of Scripture, your life's going to be inherently better. I'm not saying I'm not a prosperity preacher. I'm not saying you're going to instantly get more money. Because you may not. You probably won't. And I'm not saying your health's going to be perfect. You probably won't. What I am saying, and what I think is important to know, is that Scripture, if you dig in, hey, Miss Deany, uh, Pastor Homer, Miss Deany's husband, has been pastoring for a bazillion years. He's retired now, but what a blessing. And Miss Deany's a huge blessing, too. Hey, Michael, how are you, brother? Miss sitting around the fire with you and Cheech and all the guys up at, uh, I don't miss Ohio, but I miss some of the people there, and you're one of the ones I really miss. Awesome musician. Whew, that boy's talented. Anyhow, um, when you read scripture, you truly dig into it. You commit yourself to it. Now, you don't have to do it for hours and hours on end every day, but I think if you do it every day, you're going to be rewarded for it. God will reward, hey, Miss Colleen, you, you will be rewarded. You will be rewarded for investing in that scripture. You say, well, I'm not a reader. I don't like to read. Then you better get an audio book. You know, well, I don't like to have earbuds in my ear. Okay, well, I can't help you then. Because you're not going to get what's in this book, Holy Scriptures, if you don't invest in it, you've got to invest in it. You've got to dig in. So there's a commitment involved. There are many translations. Now, part of our ministry, uh, when people give to our ministry through our PayPal thing, uh, part of what we do is we pay for Bibles, top-notch Bibles. I mean, we're talking my cost for a case each is $40. Now, there are, that's a Bible last year lifetime. And we send them all over the world, free of charge. If somebody can't get a Bible or they don't have a Bible, uh, they're, 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 maybe their economic situation is such that they can't do it. Or I mean, we've sent them to Syria for Pete's sake. So, um, you know, if you want to read it, hey, Jessica, how are you, girl? Um, if, you, if, if you want to learn and you want to grow and you want to have that light that's in that book, you say, well, I'm a good Christian. I, I don't read the Bible, but I'm a good Christian. I don't, uh, I mean, I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to be a good person. One of the things I used to teach in the police academy, and, uh, and I, I was a, a state certified police instructor. One of the things I would say is if you think the law is common sense or common sense is the law, you are sadly and sorely mistaken. You cannot assume what's in the law is what the law is because it's not. Many times the law doesn't make any sense in the world. They're not even related. They're apples and aardvarks. Well, it's the same way with Scripture. You may think that you're, because you heard some things, that that's what's in Scripture. But it's not. And you really miss out on a lot. I said all of that to say this, and then we'll we'll, we'll go through this real quick for you. Um It's it's like uh, it's like for me it would be steamed crabs. You know that's the thing I love to eat more than anything else in the world. I like crab legs. I like steamed Chesapeake Bay blue crabs. I like um, the claws. I like uh, king crab, stone crab. You name it, I love it. I just love crabs. And 
But I said, well, I love crabs. And then I just go and I order them. I just look at them. I smell them a little bit. But I don't eat them. How do I know if I love them? Uh, How do I get nourishment if I just look at food? I just look at it. I don't actually eat it. I just look at it. Well, I mean, not to be dumb, but that's dumb. You, you don't get the nourishment just by looking at things. Oh, I, I, I have a lot of vitamins and supplements I take. I'm still sick. I don't know why. Well, do you take them every day? No, I don't ever take them at all. Huh? No, I, I don't take vitamins. I, they're, they're on the shelf. I don't take them. I don't actually take them. It's a pain in the neck. Well, they're never going to help you. I take, uh, I have, well, I'm not going to show you lift my shirt, but I have a patch on me right here that dispenses heart medicine all the time, 24-7, for a week. Today's the day that I change it. Go for a whole week. It's this little tiny thing, and then there's a bigger patch that covers it, the waterproofs it. And that, but if I don't put that on me, if that stays in the cupboard, I don't ever get. Are you following me here? I mean, I'm giving you a million examples. Hopefully you're following me. You're a pretty smart group. You tuned into this. Anyway, I think you're going to get it more here in a minute. To bring about wisdom paths to the youth and the mature that would listen to wisdom. The mature that would listen to wisdom. Listen, this book was written for the youth, for sure. But the mature that would listen to wisdom. You you ever, I remember on the police department, I remember a guy saying to me one time, he'd been on four years. And he thought he was all that. And he, you know, he would, oh, forget all what you learned in the academy. That's nothing. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. And forget this. And then you, you watch me, follow me. I remember uh, two years later or something like that. I was, at that time, when he said that, I was relatively fresh out of the, uh, well, I was fresh out of um, FTO. And then two years later, I was an FTO. I was a field training officer. And then I was doing some instructing and some different things. Then I got some temporary assignments in detectives and other places. And I remember hearing uh, him say, I I went and did a, um, we were doing a briefing because there was a security briefing. We wanted to brief all of the, all of the roll calls, you know, the groups going out to serve. And I specifically said some things and he wanted to joke and all that stuff. And I specifically said to him, listen, I won't say his name. Don't embarrass him. But I said, listen. You are an excellent cop. There's no doubt about that. I don't think I'm a better cop than you just because I'm on this assignment. But I will tell you this. Remember, when you're chasing somebody, there's a reason they're running. And their reason for running could be so great that they're willing to risk being shot. But it could also be so great that they're willing to shoot you. Think before and while and after you run. Think gun, think knife, think hands kill. That very day, and then we always have our radios on, I was sitting there later later on his shift, but I was back at my desk in detectives, and I was helping out and doing stuff in there, and, and uh, I can't remember what for, but anyway, I remember hearing uh, 10-100, which is a distress call, all, you know, clear their radio, so-and-so is in a foot pursuit, and then I knew who his call sign was. And then I uh, kept hearing, step it up, you know, to the other units. Recom kept saying, step it up and all this. And it turns out that he, you know, he did chase a guy. He was a heck of a cop, very aggressive. He did chase a guy. He caught the guy. And there's an excellent cop right there, Terry. You're awesome. Awesome dude. Just awesome human being. He catches the guy and he said in his mind, just as he was tackling him or some some part of that, he said he remembered Greener saying, they're running for a reason. Watch the hands, gun, knife. You know, his reason for running could exceed his reluctance to kill you. He remembers, he remembered that at that moment that struck him, right? From what I said at roll call that morning. And he backed off and went for his waistband. And the guy was grabbing a gun in his waistband. And he was able to, able to grab that gun and keep him from uh, shooting him with that gun. And uh, he was able to disarm him. And a, a, eventually a bunch of law enforcement got there and, you know, handcuffed the guy and all that. I, I say that story to illustrate, not that I was some smart guy, not that I was, I was a regular cop. 
but I remembered, I remembered wisdom dispensed to me, but I only got the wisdom because I was willing. So it's the mature that would listen to wisdom. If you're mature, but you don't listen to wisdom, if you feel like you can't learn anything, eh, that's a waste of your time. Skip over Proverbs. And the leader who might not know it all. The leader who might not know it all. That's a lot of us. Uh, I have people tell me all the time, well, you know, I'm not a leader. Everybody's a leader of something. You may not have an official title, but you're, you're a leader of something. Anyhow, here's my summary. You take it for what you want. Are you mature and have an ear to listen? Are you going to listen to wisdom? This is wisdom. Even though Solomon is billed as the wisest man on earth, he failed often. When someone as wealthy as Solomon fails, that is a Texas-sized heads up to us that there are lessons to be learned if only the reader will take, advantages, take advantage of the experiences of others. We are blessed beyond measure to have the words and thoughts of Solomon written in such an easy-to-follow medium as the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 1, 1 through 7. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to discern the sayings of understanding, to receive instruction in wise behavior, righteousness, justice, and equity, to give prudence to the naive, to give youth to the youth knowledge and discretion, a wise man will hear and increase in learning, and a man of understanding will acquire wise counsel. To understand a proverb and a figure, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Or maybe this, Proverbs twenty-one nineteen. It is better to live in a desert land than with a quarrelsome, worrisome wife. Now that's some advice there. I wrote in the book, see if I was already wise and didn't need wisdom, I would have left verse 19 off, seeing as I have to ride home with my wife for my radio broadcast over a tall bridge. See, wisdom, one verse at a time. Pray for me to make it home. I wrote that in there. When I was writing this book, I was doing the Kehillah. So we would have to drive home over this huge bridge, which ironically is where my crash was. Anyway, here's verse 20. It gets better. Precious treasure and oil are in a wise person's dwelling, but a foolish person devours all that he has. Whoever pursues righteousness and mercy finds life, prosperity, and honor. A wise person scales the city of warriors and brings down the stronghold in which they trust. Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul out of troubles. A proud and haughty man Mocker is his name, acts with an overbearing pride. A slacker's craving will kill him because his hands refuse to work. All day long he craves greedily, yet the righteous one gives and does not hold back. After leading us on a path that surely includes whatever station in life any reader may occupy, for the young person, the naive, the wise man, and a, a man of understanding, we are given in chapter 1, verse 7, the key, the utter link to any pursuit and acquisition of wisdom. Fear the Lord. This is followed precipitously by the rebuke of fools who identify themselves by despising wisdom and instruction. Sometimes I am a fool, and if we are all being honest, Many of us are at times fools. God directed Solomon to include these chapters from a collection. Now, this is some knowledge I'm going to drop on you. probably don't know. Um, I, I didn't know it until, uh, I think, my second year at Masters, which, by the way, I have a shirt on there. Yeah, that's my alma mater shirt. I didn't even think about that. I just looked down there. I saw yellow. I thought, oh, that must be what it is. Anyway, let me reread this. God directed Solomon to include these chapters from a collection of his 3,000 Proverbs. 3,000, leading me to believe that these are the most salient and relevant, not only for the audience of Solomon's time, but also for my generation. We are not relegated to sail in this dangerous and complex ocean, helplessly rudder, rudderless, for the simplest and most complex storms we face in life. God gave us these Proverbs from which we receive amazing tidbits of instruction from Solomon's vast experience. Proverbs isn't just a book of the Bible. It's an instruction manual for life. 
well, how do we live a wise life in light of the snares present in this dangerous and conflict-filled world? Well, I'll give you the how. When we aren't busy praising and worshiping God with reckless abandon like only God is looking, we read and we study Proverbs. Proverbs is presumed to be the book of Solomon's middle-aged years with the knowledge that Solomon had already experienced in a litany of challenges that, frankly, you or I will ever face, will likely ever face. Numbers 6, 24 through 26. Adonai bless you and keep you. Adonai make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Adonai turn his face toward you and grant you shalom. I will repeat it again. Something sacred hangs in the balance of every moment. Avraham Heschel. My name is Dr. Sean Michael Greener and I'm here to tell you today is a great day to be alive. Our next one is Ecclesiastes. I want you to listen to Ecclesiastes. We're going to do that the next time we broadcast. Hey, Lynette. Hey, Diane. Hey, John. Thank you for joining us. If you've missed the first part of this, you can always go back and listen to the beginning. You can also listen to the Spreaker broadcast, which doesn't have my face, but it has uh, all the sound with no commercials. Ecclesiastes, I expect, hopefully, Lord willing, I will do tomorrow. It is a powerful powerful book. I cannot wait to share with you what I have for you about that. As I said before, and I'll say it again, my f- my friends that just lost their friend and workmate, they were just talking to that person an hour before, no indication that they were not going to ever be able to talk to them again. Many of you listening, I know there are many gold stars listening, you've had the knock on your door. I know many of you have lost someone Recently, you've had the knock on your door, the phone call. I've been the police officer delivering that terrible, terrible news. I've been the person that has had to deliver that news. And it's a hard thing. Nobody, no police officer wants to do it. No individual wants to do it. No pastor wants to do it. Because it's hard. Because we know the pain. But I'll say this. If you know Christ, if you've placed your faith in Jesus, I'm going to tell you without any question in my mind if the other person that you've lost also knew Christ, you will see them again. And whatever pain or whatever sorrows they had, whatever struggles they had in life here in the natural, in a moment they will be gone. So too will yours. Today is a great day to be alive. Now, You have to go live like it. Thank you for joining Dr. Sean today. Please follow Dr. Sean at www.drseangreener.com and on social media at facebook.com forward slash smgreener. Twitter at the Ninja Pastor and on Instagram at the Ninja Pastor. If you would like to support Dr. Sean's ministry and send Bibles around the world, don't forget to hit the donate page on drseangreener.com or go to paypal.me forward slash Dr. Sean Greener to invest in spreading the Word of God to the world. And please download our free apps to listen to our Spreaker radio show. Thank you again for listening, and don't forget to share.